Damn, you look sexy. That is going to be a keeper. Look, I need to talk to you about this Polaroid camera because I've had it for almost a year and it's about time to review how it's gone. Hey, I'm Gareth. Thanks for watching. I make videos about stuff we do with cameras, whether that's video editing, 35mm photography, or in this case, instant film. So if it sounds like something that might be interesting, then maybe subscribe. But enough of that, we need to talk about Polaroid, and specifically this, the One Step Plus. Polaroid was the entry point for my journey into film photography. It's always had a magical quality for me, something I talked about in another video, where I also look at the genius that was Polaroid inventor Edwin H. Land. There was always the possibility that you might at some point make the improbable come true. Apparently, he came up with the idea for it when he took a photo of his daughter, and she asked why she couldn't see the photo straight away. It was some sort of eureka moment, and he came up with the concept for the camera, the film, and the chemistry in like an hour. And history was made. Polaroid is full of nostalgia and has been a pop culture phenomenon. Whether it's Andre 3000 singing Shake It Like a Polaroid Picture, <laughs> or the concept that Instagram was originally built on. Its photo feed was originally all square, like old Instamatic and Polaroid size images, and full of filters based on analog film camera styles. Even the app's original logo was ripped off from the Polaroid Land Camera 1000, down to the rainbow stripe. And let's not forget the origin of the app's name, Instagram, either, with Polaroid directly referenced by the creators in its original About page. The One Step Plus, which I wanted so badly for about six months before I got it, is an homage to the 1970s One Step. And just for comparison, here's an actual 1980s Polaroid Super Color 600. It's still the same vibe and looks, and I'm not sure the average person on the street will be able to tell that this one was made 40 years after this. If you look closely, they've hidden some modern features. There's a micro USB socket on the back and a few extra LEDs on the top. On the front, there's a slot to load the film. This takes the old 600 type film or the new iType film. It's exactly the same film with the only difference being the 600 has a battery in the cartridge to power the original cameras. So they're slightly more expensive. The new cameras like the One Step Plus have their own rechargeable batteries built in so they don't need power from the cartridge, but you can still put 600 film in them. You've got a switch to change between the two lenses, a portrait lens and another for group shots or landscapes. It basically just changes the focal distance. There's also a switch that can be used to correct exposure and the shutter button and a button with a plus on it, which I've forgotten what it does. Loading film in this is really easy. You just pop open the tray, slide in the new film cartridge, which usually has a fun little message on, and close it up. Job done. I won't do it on this because I've got some film in it already. The viewfinder doesn't go through the lens, so it's not entirely accurate, but it's good enough. And there's no complaints here because with something like a Polaroid, I'm not looking for perfection. It's about capturing a moment, and I may not even be using the viewfinder at all, to be honest. That's as much as you may need or want from a Polaroid camera. Certainly, that's all I got it for, but by pairing it with your phone, you can add all sorts of features, such as manual shooting, a remote trigger, timer, light painting, double exposure modes, and a noise trigger, whatever that is. It's all pretty straightforward to use. I didn't really use much of the new phone-based features, so there's not too much I can say about it, but the remote is quite handy for group selfies or self-portraits though, giving you a button trigger on your phone screen to nudge the shutter, but to be honest, it could have been a bit bigger so you don't clumsily miss it when trying to act cool in the photo while trying to finger it out of sight. This camera is a bit of a whopper. It's not discreet, it won't fit in your pocket, and it's a bit of a ball ache to carry around on the off chance that you might want to capture something. But I do take it whenever I go on trips or know there's gonna be special moments. In terms of picture quality, it's 
just what I was after, which is basically not very sharp, not very well exposed and rarely in focus. But it's a complete vibe and it's the reason we choose this over digital. Although, to be honest, they probably were more over or underexposed than I imagined at times, which is probably down to user error. Maybe I didn't have the exposure switch in the right place, but I don't really want to be thinking about settings at all when I'm using an instant camera like this. And I don't particularly care either, really. But it's interesting to compare an original photo from the late 80s or early 90s with new ones. I don't think I've taken a single photo that was as sharp or as well exposed as that, but more on that later. Taking a photo on this is an emotional roller coaster. You have the moment you want to remember, you press the button, the film whirs and ejects out of the slot, and you quickly try and whip it out and turn it face down to make sure the light doesn't prematurely ruin it. Remembering that actually you're not meant to shake them like a Polaroid picture. And then you have to wait 10 to 15 minutes to know whether it was a beautifully retro capture or a costly modern waste of film and money. I do love almost every picture I've taken with this camera, as long as I forget how much each one costs. A pack of eight films costs £16, so that's £2 per photo. Incredible maths. It's not a bank breaker, but it does make you think twice before even taking the camera anywhere with you, let alone pressing the shutter. And I'd stay away from buying secondhand unused film too, because you can't be sure how it's been stored, which can be a big deal. The first pack of film I used was almost entirely useless. I think most of the shots just came out pure white, and I suspect it was to do with the film not being stored properly because, well, I don't have a better explanation. Polaroid says film packs should be stored in their unopened sealed packaging in a cool and dry environment. They recommend storing the film flat inside a fridge at a constant temperature between four and 18 degrees. And even though I went on to store my film in the fridge, I've literally only now noticed that it says flat in the fridge. I've always had them upright because it well, took up less space. For sake. Oh well. This could be at the heart of why I thought the photos never really fulfilled their potential, but I genuinely don't have a problem with them looking a bit funky. It's the antithesis of modern digital photography and I bloody love it. With all its imperfections, it just has so much soul. I wanted one of these cameras so badly. I was gonna do a whole photo project with it, but it just never happened through a mix of cost and the inconsistency of the results. The photos are perfect for my own memories of my kids or moments in my life, but I didn't have the same sort of pride showing them to others. Photos like these that I would have deleted if they were digital have become some of my most treasured memories. Yes, there might be cheaper or better instant cameras out there, but for me, it had to be a Polaroid. There's something iconic about it that is still there for me. The best things about this camera are everything that was there 50 years ago. The instant film, the aesthetic, the simplicity, and the other stuff that's been added, Bluetooth, fancy shooting modes, I just haven't used. The tech doesn't improve it, with the exception of the built-in battery. Maybe for some people the phone app will be a source of creativity, but it's not for me. It was inconsistent with standard photos, let alone burning through film to try light painting or multiple exposures. And so this one is about to be packed up and sent off to its new owner in Cornwall, because if you want an instant film camera, you might as well get the original. But what about this? The Polaroid Lab. 